All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Building School Community from a Distance. We're going to be talking a little bit today about things you can do to keep your teachers as well as your families and students engaged in the school experience now that we are in a distance learning environment. Uh, by way of introductions, my name is Brad Schreffler. I am the digital instructional coach at Bridgewater Middle School. I have been recently called on multiple occasions that YouTube guy. Um, so I do also have the link to my YouTube down at the bottom. So any resources I build and make available for my teachers at Bridgewater, I've also been publishing on a public YouTube channel available for anyone in OCPS and beyond. And I'm always available to help answer questions that way about how to do distance learning, different tools and how to use them, things like that. So those are always out there for you, which is why when they asked me today, what not, not asked me today, last me last like last week, what I wanted to present on, I didn't go straight to a tool or a, a tip or a trick I, because that stuff's out there already. I wanted to talk more about community building because at Bridgewater, that is something that is a passion of our leadership team and it is a priority in everything we do. And so as we have done distance learning so far, we've definitely focused on the ways in which we can bring distance learning and still have community and still make sure our teachers feel both connected but also appreciated make sure our students feel like they're still part of the school even though they're not coming in every day and making sure that our families are getting a message that is similar and the same across the board for all of us so that is kind of how we're doing things at bridgewater now and so we're going to talk a little bit about that today so we're going to start with where to start and then we'll move into some things about sort of maintaining some normalcy and then maybe some new things to try and i also want to focus a lot on suggestions and ideas from you guys because as we say you know hashtag better together mine are not the only ideas for how to do this stuff but i would love to hear what other people are doing and what they're thinking about doing as well so when i thought about where to start i think the first thing to figure out is what kinds of things did you do at your school before that were already part of or building your school community? Did your principal go on the morning announcements every morning? Or did you have after school social events for teachers or after school clubs and activities for students? Did you have things like, you know, uh, teacher, you know, teacher shout outs? Did you find ways to thank teachers and support teachers? Uh, verbally and in, in the middle of a school day? Or did you, you know, I know teachers, uh, principals and administrators and coaches who leave thank you notes in mailboxes, um, those kinds of things. Our school is big on Aloha Fridays. It's something we do every week. So what are the kinds of things that you did already as a school community? And then the next thought is, what are sort of the traits that define your school? If someone were to say, hey, I want to come work at your school, what's it like? What are the first things that pop into your mind when you describe your school and your community? Um, and then the last one is, what are the pain points for your teachers right now? What are the points where they're really struggling, they're really stressing out about, they're really concerned about? What are those points that they're at right now? And uh, in order to, I don't want to be the only one sitting here speaking at you guys because I don't think that works very well. Could you guys in the in the chat or, you know, just give me an idea of what are some of the things that you're already doing? What are the things that define your school community as it is right now? And while you're typing, I'll just sort of think about some of the things we did at Bridgewater. You know, our we have morning announcements every morning for the pledge and the moment of silence, of course, as well as our TV news channel as well. You know, in terms of after school activities, we typically have a group that goes after work on Fridays and and deep compresses for the week and, and relaxes for a little bit before we head back home to our families for the weekends. Um, lots of after school activities for the students, and we're trying to to work with some of that stuff now. I do a lot of personal thank you notes. I have a whole box of thank you notes as a digital coach. I have them in my desk, and so I handwrite thank you notes to a lot of my teachers pretty often. What are some of the things you guys have at your school that you would like to continue even from a distance? And I saw that uh, my principal, Mr. Jackson, and my assistant principal, 
mutters are on this uh, message. So if you have anything you'd like to add, that would be cool. Vanessa, I love that, that they're still doing video announcements daily from school. Um, that's pretty cool. And I like the the teacher sending them off with a written message. We've been talking about doing some of that kind of stuff. I've loved, one of the things I've loved that is really, really cool to me is the elementary schools doing the parades last week. I thought that was pretty neat. That was awesome. Okay, continuing the, the district or the shout out board. I like that, having the colorful post-it notes. You know, uh, a Padlet, board for student or for teachers would be a really easy way to accomplish that as well. And then it would still have some of that visual component to it. You could do a Padlet board or a Wakelet board. Um, both are similar tools that you could do online as well. I like that. A couple people are still typing, so I'll give you a second. Still doing announcements on Facebook Live. Awesome. So, Julie, I would say to get teachers to post, the quickest and easiest thing I would probably set up would be a Flipgrid board. And I can show you one of those in a minute because I actually have an example that I started that I kind of talk about here in a little bit. Um, but you can do a Flipgrid board pretty easily and share it out to teachers so that they could do announcements to their kids and have it available. Wildcat of the week, yeah, that, that weekly person could be great to have uh, in there as well. So once you kind of have the, in my mind, once you know what are the things that you want to do at your school or that you've done historically to build culture and build community, you want to think about the ways that you can continue those um, online. And some of these you guys have already talked about. So morning announcements going to Facebook Live or YouTube, both are great options, right? Um, if you have some sort of eighth period happy hour, something like that that you do with your teachers or groups of teachers, um, you can move those events to Zoom. I'm sure many of us have done things like that outside of work. You know, with the social distancing world, is lots of Zoom happy hours. It seems like going on when you're when you're stuck at home. But that's something you can still do at school as well. Not at school. <laughs> Don't do that at school. Uh, that's something you can continue with your your culture as it is with your group. So if you have a group you normally hang out with, consider inviting them to a happy hour event like that as well. Um, you can also do teacher shout outs via Canvas or Facebook. So you guys hit on a lot of these already. These are both um, really cool. Uh, a couple shout outs I want to give for my own staff is, you know, we have a couple of really cool things that are going on. One is my principal is weekly doing announcements. Um, he's kind of uh, there's a phrase that he uses or a way he says, good morning, Bobcats every morning that has become a, almost a meme at our school where the students all know it, the students all expect it. And so when we did day one, we went ahead and added, uh, principal Jackson going on Facebook live and doing morning announcements right at nine 30 when they normally would be doing the moment of silence in the pledge and giving that good morning Bobcats that our school is so used to. Um, and we're, you know, that over a thousand views on each of those, just because that gives that sense of normalcy that that students, teachers are are craving. And many of the comments were from our teachers who had gone on the school Facebook page to watch the morning announcements, even though it was, you know, something that you know, wasn't necessarily for staff. It was something that continued that normalcy that that we're all looking for. And I think that's really, to me, a big part of this because. We're putting a lot of thought and effort, all of our teachers are, I believe, into reconnecting our students, making sure that they're mentally okay. And we're, we're trying to make sure that their mental health is, is good and checking in on them. We're, we're putting in place these ideas of reasonable expectations and, 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 and there's lots of debate about you know, attendance and how many assignments and how many minutes of work and all those things going around, really worrying about student mental health. But I think even teachers really want to see this sense of normalcy. So any way you can come up with to continue the things that you've always done, I think is going to be really critical as we move on. One I have to give a big shout out to is our TV production teacher. He has his TV production students still doing 
our morning announcements in a, a modified format. So he does twice a week on Monday and Wednesday, what he's calling the Bobcat Blast, which are a shortened little news piece. He has students record them at home with themselves, the anchors that would normally do the Bobcat News, and then he posts them on our Bobcat News YouTube page for all of our parents and students, and then we share them out on the school Facebook page and on Canvas and things like that. Um, so I kind of wanted to share, just because I think this is so cool, so I want to kind of share this video with you all real quick. It's only a couple minutes. We don't need to watch the whole thing, but I just thought it was really neat, so we'll give this a listen. So it just kind of gives you an idea of of what we're doing to keep that part of it going. You know, just making sure that some form of normalcy is being shared out with everybody um, as we go through this process. the The next thing we're working on and we're doing now is working on the teacher shoutouts, and I'm going to talk about that more in in just a second. Um, I know I, I asked for comments and questions in the chat before, but we're going to go to it one more time. If anybody has something that they're doing right now that's sort of continuing out what's happening, then uh, please feel free to share. Yeah, and I will say I deserve our awesome, awesome TV production teacher, Andrew Inches. He's amazing and is is still doing the news, still keeping this stuff going. Um, he also does a full news episode as they would normally do on Fridays. So they do one a week where they're doing remote journalism work and kids are submitting videos throughout the week, putting it all together. Um, and it's completely student run at this point, which is really, really awesome. So Andrew Inches, awesome shout out. So if you have any ideas of what you're you're doing, you're continuing. I saw, you know, we talked about a couple before, but giving daily news, giving those daily videos, you know, going live on your school Facebook page is so simple uh, as, a, as an administrator. But even as a teacher, if you're in a classroom setting, you could just do a quick studio video, two, three minutes, just saying hi to your kids, saying, hey, here's the things you should be working on today and put it on your Canvas page if you wanted to. Nice, I like sharing out the students doing the reading milestones. That's what you would, again, continuing what you'd be doing. Thank you, Robin. That's the kind of stuff you would have been doing already. So continuing that on your school Facebook page and Canvas page is great. Um, even for elementary students, or even for elementary schools, you have an all students course. There's a student body course in Canvas. So if you have your school using Canvas at all, you can shoot out messages and announcements that way. And we've been using that a lot here to, to share out information with all of our student body. And then you also have the principal's corner, which the principal is over and has all the teachers in it. So you can share out shout outs to the teachers that way as well. Awesome. Awesome. You know, another thing I um, didn't talk about just, but if you're, if you're an instructional coach, if you're a media specialist, if you're um, someone in the support position, you know, we, we've been asking teachers to do office hours. That's something that I've been doing as well. I've been doing office hours for my staff. So I do two hours at a time, usually um, a few times a week, at least where I'm just available on a BBB, just sitting there taking taking questions, taking concerns, giving people a chance to talk. And it's been, it's been a lot of, it's been a useful tool to get a lot of information out to my teachers. But when they have specific issues, letting them jump on a BBB, I can send them to screen share and I can have them walk through a process or we can just do a one-on-one -on -one talk. And it's, uh, it's been really helpful, I think, for our teachers. So something to think about is even if you're not necessarily in a, a technical support role, if you're that person that has information, you know, if you're the person going out of your way to learn things and check out new tools, you can make that available to any of your teachers, you know, use your distribution list and share that information out. So something to think about.
Cool. I love the PE challenge of the week. That's good. And yes, got to love Flipgrid. And um, doing the read alouds is awesome too. Tons of publishers and authors have given permission to do read alouds, which normally you wouldn't be allowed to record and post. But because of all this, they're giving tons and tons of rights to just say, hey, do what you need to do. And I think that's awesome. Corey, that is super cool. Virtual lunch in the library. I saw another post from somebody saying that they just set up a BBB lunch with the students that would normally eat lunch in their room. So I think that's a great idea is, is again, maintaining what you're doing. If you were already that person that had kids hanging out in your room at lunch, set up a BBB lunch, you know, make your lunch, bring it with you and, and sit there and enjoy lunch with some of your students for a half hour, an hour, give them a chance to play, um, to talk, to chat, you know, Jackbox games, if you don't know those, I'm going to bring those up in a minute again, but they're a great way to to play games online, but bingo would be another one. So lots of really cool things you could be doing there. So here's the fun stuff. This is the stuff I really love. It's some new things you might try, some things we've done and have had some success with so far. Um, in all this distance and social distancing and everything else, if you've been watching social media at all, drive through is the thing of the now. All these places that didn't used to do drive through are doing drive through constantly. So at our school, we're trying some different options for drive through things. So for example, we on Friday, historically our school, uh, every, every, the first Friday of every month, different parts of our school leadership team host a pancake breakfast for our teachers. So 8.30 in the morning, we do pancake breakfast on the first Friday of every month and we theme it out. And it's just a way to, to have our teachers all come down to the media center, have breakfast together, relax and get some nice fresh pancakes. And um, it's something that's sort of, again, existing in our school culture. Um, and with all this going on, we decided to do a, a drive-through pancake um, Friday on Friday of last week. So I have, a, the link is actually just on my um, Google Drive. It's not on YouTube. So I can, if you're interested, you can check out the setup we used for drive-through pancakes. And we followed all the procedures for food distribution that the district is expecting for those distribution sites. And we had teachers come by and pick up pancakes and and take them to go and and went off and ate them and it was it was really a great opportunity i think to just let some teachers come by and say hi get to wave as they drove by and picked up some pancakes and it was something that wasn't crazy complicated but you could do it with another treat as well you know the, the stay-at-home order allows for you to drive to pick up food so that would be what you're expecting them to do so i think that's really a, a way to to get some form of community without having large groups available at a time. We've also been doing some drive through tech support for students. Again, a way to, to give them those working devices. Secondary, um, uh, secondary has the ability to, um, obviously all their students have taken laptops home and so we need to make sure that those devices are working. So we've got drive through tech support where students and parents are coming by. We've got a tent set up in the front and we're sitting there in, lawn chairs and and setting up and just fixing basic issues crack screens swapping out devices so drive through tech support and even if you know I, I was thinking even if you're not a a um a digital school the principal or the assistant principal could do sort of a drive through q a time for parents i know this is some time where a lot of parents and students are confused and don't know what to do and don't feel connected so as a way to do drive through q a would be a great option um those of you that were in earlier, uh, you saw, so if you're doing BBB sessions, if you're doing video conferencing sessions with your staff or you're in a staff session or just even with your students, you know, the playing the music is a simple little trick just to, to add some lightheartedness to what is a, a stressful time for people. So if you're in BBB, the way I did that before is that plus sign down in the bottom left when you're the creator, you can do share an external video. And when you share an external video, then you can put in a YouTube playlist as the link you use. So I just do school safe playlist and grab a link from that list and then um, share that as my background music and have music going while we're waiting for things to start, have it available to kick back off in the middle if I wanted to. So that's one way to do it. Also, uh, use of just general levity and props is another thing. So in the picture here, you can see Principal Jackson. He is wearing a cowboy hat because as he explained it in our meeting that we are blazing a new path. We are trailblazing here. So he thought that the cowboy hat was appropriate. And that 
makes total sense for him. Um, but also, you know, we've just sort of bringing yourself into those. It, it is, it is a lot. Um, it is a lot going on. So bringing your whole and true self into a meeting, it doesn't have to be completely formal and, and, and perfectly cut. People are, you know, just relax and joke. You know, if you are doing a BBB for your students for an hour, you're doing an open office hour for an hour. Um, one of the things that my son's teacher is doing, and I think is super, super cool, shout out to Mr. Langosh at Moss Park Elementary. Um, one of the things he's doing that I think is super cool is he does his two or three hours and, and has them available for questions and stuff. But at the end, he will split off into breakout rooms, any students that are there. And he just does it randomly so that different students are getting to interact. And then that turns all their mics and webcams on and they can just chat with each other for a little bit. You know, they're second graders. So getting the chance to socialize is awesome. You know, and I know my son is just loving being able to stick on and stay and he'll stay on for a whole extra hour just to talk to his friends and get to chat with them. So I think that's a great thing to do. You know, if, if you're having that time, giving them that extra time to chat with each other. And again, same thing with staff. You know, when we've done our staff meetings on, we've been doing them on Wednesdays in general, we have the last couple of times we've had 60, so, 60 or so teachers stay for almost an hour after, just because we're playing music, we're chatting, you know, we, we are there answering questions too, but it's really just us hanging out and relaxing. And so that it's just giving people that chance to interact. I think all of us are feeling isolated in different ways right now. So just the staff meetings have had another, um, another way to, to connect. And yes, Nancy, a hundred percent, we definitely all need one another in this time. So just that extra time and space to talk and, and relax and maybe share a joke here and there, I think is excellent. So another, um, a couple other things to try that I threw out there. I said staff game night. I mentioned already Jackbox games. So if you have anybody that plays games uh, or or knows about computer games, Jackbox is awesome. Um, there's basically the way it works is one person hosts. It's kind of like Kahoot, but way more fun. Um, so you one person hosts and it's on a main screen. So you could screen share like on a BBB or on a Zoom conference. And then the other participants play on their cell phones and they answer the questions on their phones and things like that. But it's all very funny. It's kind of like a fill in the blank Mad Libs kind of stuff. And, and there's a bunch of different games. So if you have somebody on your team that likes games and knows that, it's really easy to set up and, and play Jackbox games. So most of the games max out at eight. So this wouldn't be like a whole staff thing. You could do this with your PLC, with uh, small groups, with um, different groupings options that way. But that's really cool. Staff appreciation pages are another thing. We just sent out to our students and parents a Google form via the student body page on Canvas, a Google form asking them to brag about their teachers and teachers that are doing just an awesome job on distance learning and supporting their learning environment. And within less than an hour of posting it, we already had 20 something responses. I actually did not get a chance to check it this morning, but um, it was over 20 responses within less than an hour of kids just saying how cool their teachers are and what they're doing to share out that information um, and support them in this distance learning environment. And then the plan is to turn around and we're going to share those things out on our social media pages, on our Canvas pages, so that our staff sees that they're being appreciated and recognized for their hard work. And with that, I also added a Flipgrid page where students could create a video message to share out as well. So those video messages will be available to share via social media and things like that as well, so that we can show you know, the teachers that are really working hard and, and doing the work out there. And yes, I actually, if you, the bit.ly right there is available to share that out. I've got it on the page. So bit.ly, I'll type it in here. Um, but if you type, if you go to that, uh, link, it'll give you a make a copy link, bit.ly slash BMS. There you go. That should give you just an automatically make a copy. Obviously, you'll want to change the header because you guys aren't the Bobcats at any other school, but you could easily uh, recreate that. Um, make sure you change the Flipgrid link as well, just because you don't want to point everybody to my Flipgrid for my staff and students. But um, that would be a quick and easy way to create that form so that you know what's going on there. So definitely available. Um, so those are kind of the, the main things that are on my mind right now when we talk about some new things to try, some things that are going well, you know, maintaining normalcy, 
Um, I think those are sort of the combinations. And there, there's a, again, I, I just keep coming back to, we need to keep in mind that this is a stressful time for everybody, even for teachers, even for parents, even for students. It's it's stressful for everybody, and we need to, you know, have some understanding, have some empathy, have some compassion for what everybody's doing, and whatever your role may be at a school thinking about the people around you, thinking about the students, thinking about the people that are maybe supporting you, and how can we connect the things that make a climate and a culture and a community with the needs that our students and parents and teachers are feeling right now? And what can we be doing to, to keep everyone feeling close? And I think that, you know, like we said, hashtag better together is really where I come back to is, um, we need to to lean on each other. And so social media is a very powerful tool. If you're involved on the Twitter space, there's tons of great ideas out there for how to do these kinds of things and also just to maintain um, mental health for teachers in this time. So, um, but I, at this point, I would be glad to open up for questions, any comments, anything anybody wants to know. Um, if anybody has any other suggestions, I know a bunch have been shared in the chat already, but if you have any other suggestions, I'd be glad to take those as well. And, um, but also if you're ready to head out, thank you all for joining me today and, 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 and participating and sharing ideas and listening. And I'd be glad to take any questions at this time. I'm going to go ahead and unlock, um, give you guys the option to share your microphones if you would like to, so you can ask questions directly. Um, so where can I go to learn about to so use Flipgrid and Padlet? I don't uh, I don't have a video on Flipgrid yet, so I that will get added to my list of videos to make because um, I think it is something useful. I think it's a really powerful tool in distance learning. So I will be doing that. Flipgrid is pretty straightforward. So if you just go to flipgrid.com, there's a lot of resources already there until I get around to making one. Um, same thing with Padlet. Once you create it, it's, it's pretty clear, padlet.com, and check that one out. Uh, Nancy, to answer your question, when will this off be offered again? It is offered tomorrow at 10 a.m. and then Thursday at 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. Not 1 a.m. No, not never mind. Uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. and tomorrow at 10 a.m. So it'll be available both of those times as well. And of course, the recording will be out, and you can share that out once it's done. Yeah, I won't be on at 1 a.m. That's silly. I'll be asleep. Oh, thank thank you for showing up. I appreciate uh, appreciate some people came out and checked in. It's been awesome. It's been a great way to to chat and share some ideas. And like I said, any comments, questions, feel free. I'm gonna leave the recording going in case anybody does have any questions about this. Like I said, you do have access to turn on your microphone now if you would like to ask any questions or or just check in. And then and when I kick the recording off, if you have any questions about anything, not community related, building community, you're welcome to ask those as well, because I'm going to be hanging here for a little bit. Thank you, Jackson. Appreciate it. I'm trying, just trying to do stuff to help, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm glad I got a couple new things for you, Robin. I appreciate it. And so, and again, thank you to all who shared out ideas as well. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the recording now. If you're watching the recording, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, check out my YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash C slash Bradley Schreffler OCPS. Good luck spelling all that out. And uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button. So, all right, guys, have a good one.